In 2020, an investigator from the PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals organization, worked undercover at the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center to expose the harsh conditions that the animals there suffered through. Many highly intelligent and social monkeys who would have otherwise been roaming beautiful rainforests were imprisoned in a state of perpetual lockdown, pacing and shrieking inside their steel cages. This investigator witnessed many harsh scenes at their time in this laboratory, including frightened and protective mothers crying out in anguish as their infants were separated from them forever. Noah, one of the monkeys in this lab, had been there for over 20 years. Every night, he slept in a cold, dark, windowless room with nowhere to go, nothing to see, and not even a blanket to keep him warm. The impact that such a nightmarish environment has on these animals is even worse. Cornelius, another one of the monkeys in this lab, was often found hunched over in the corner of his cage, aching with loneliness and despair, having lost his will to live. Other animals like Charlie pulled out their own hair, a sign of extreme psychological distress. After enduring a life of pain, terror, and isolation, almost all these animals are killed. Why? Because either A, they've served their purpose in the experiment, or B, they aren't in a fit condition to return to their natural habitats, or C, they simply aren't needed anymore. Why is this happening? And more importantly, why are we letting this happen? Over 110 million animals are killed every year in US laboratories for the purpose of animal experimentation. Let's not even get to the number of animals killed worldwide. The US allows millions of rabbits, cats, dogs, rodents, among other animals, to be burned, shocked, isolated, addicted to drugs, and even brain damaged for results that aren't even accurate most of the time. The evidence proving animal experimentation to be ineffective is overwhelming. According to the NIH, 95% of the drugs shown to be safe and effective in animals fail in human trials. This is an astonishing rate of failure and results in many animal lives being thrown away as well as a delay in the approval of drugs for human use. Also, the National Institute of Cancer admits that they've cured mice of cancer for decades now but it simply doesn't work that way in humans. So if animal experimentation is so ineffective, why is it continuing? And are there other reasons as to why it continues? So I'm sure that there's gonna be at least a few of you here right now that have tried on makeup before or might even be wearing it right now. And you might be wondering how that's related to anything I'm saying, but believe it or not, animal experimentation plays a big role in developing cosmetics. Worldwide, nearly half, a million and nearly half a million rabbits are blinded, poisoned, and killed to make products like mascara, blush, and shampoo. These terrified rabbits have substances forced down their throats and drip into their eyes before they are mercilessly killed. In addition to just being cruel, animal testing for cosmetics is really unnecessary because companies can already create so many innovative products using ingredients that have a history of safe use. Also, human cell-based tests and modern computer technology can also give results that are more effective and accurate. So there has been some action taken to end cosmetic testing. So far, 40 countries have banned it around the world, which is amazing. But in the US, only 10 states out of 50 states have banned it. It's time that we catch up because no animal should die in the name of beauty. Also, many animal experiments are conducted for the sake of curiosity. In one instance, baby mice had their legs chopped off by experimenters so they could observe if the baby mice would learn to groom themselves with their stuffs. In another case, polar bears were submerged in a tank of crude oil and salt water to see if they'd survive. These experiments have no aim to promote public health or add on to any scientific research. They're just done for curiosity. And torturing innocent animals for this isn't morally right. So let's talk about morality. Experimenters plant wires into animals' brains and even sometimes crush their spines, yet painkillers aren't required. Why is that? The concept of human supremacy. The idea 
that animal lives are, such a, are at such little more value compared to humans that we can use them as mere disposable things, play with their lives, and use them in research that is almost always destined to fail. It may be true that animals can't reason or can't talk that the, the way that we do, but can they suffer? Yes, they can. They can feel the same pain that me, you, or any other human can. The reason that so many animals, I mean, an animals are put through agonizing mental and physical pain for the purpose of animal experimentation that is illegal to do to humans. Basically, the main reason we do this is because we see them as the readily available substitute to us. And this is a reason of convenience rather than of scientific need. If we were doing something for scientific need, it would make more sense to focus on alternatives that are more effective. The FDA currently encourages many different alternatives to animal testing that replace the ocular sensitivity and skin irritation tests found in animal testing. These alternatives are much more effective, less costly, and also take away the difficulties of interpretation as found in animal tests. Specifically, one alternative is testing chemicals in cultured human cells that mimic the functions of their respective organs. These are called organs on a chip and allow researchers to observe the effects of new drugs in humans without directly testing them in the humans themselves. Another method is using computers. There are thousands of online chemical compound tests that can be found in online chemical databases, and algorithms can be used to get this information and compare test chemical compounds with new ones. By looking at their structural similarities, scientists can predict the toxicity of the new chemical substance. And studies have shown that this is actually 90% accurate in predicting toxicity. So now that we know that we can develop so many great alternatives with the use of technology, we need to support the use and further development of them. And funding is a big part of this issue. Millions of dollars are wasted every year for the purpose of animal experimentation. 47% of NIH-funded research involves animal experimentation, and in 2020, the NIH budgeted nearly $42 billion for research and development. And it's not just the NIH. One third of the projects by the multi National Multiple Sclerosis Society also involves animal experimentation. Animal testing diverts time and energy away from methods that are more effective. Yet experimenters continue to plant wires and devices into cats' brains, breed dogs with muscular dystrophy, and so many other cruel experiments. As of right now, a fraction of 1% of the NIH's funding actually goes toward developing alternatives. With this little amount of money, we were able to develop organ on, organs on a chip and organoids, both that don't harm humans or animals. So imagine what we could do if we flipped this funding issue and focused more on developing alternatives to animal testing. Ending animal experimentation will be a lengthy process if everyone doesn't pitch in. And I mean anybody, you don't have to be a scientist. You can help by buying cruelty-free products, educating others about this often hidden issue, and also supporting cruelty-free organizations like the PETA. And if you are a scientist, who experiments on animals often, you can try to implement the three R's into your research. The three R's are reduction, replacement, and refinement. Reduction is reducing the number of animals in your study and being able to define why you need the numbers that you do. Secondly, replacement is replacing your live animal with the computational system, if that's possible. Thirdly, refinement is refining the experiment itself so you cause minimal harm and pain to the animal in your study. To end on a positive note, if any of you watches, if any of you keep, keeps up with the news, you might know that President Biden signed legislation in December of 2022 that said new drugs do not need to be tested on animals anymore to get the FDA's approval. This is a fantastic step we are taking, but we need to make sure we don't stop here. If we really value human health, morals, and lives, we would be focusing a lot more on developing alternatives to a method that doesn't even work half the time, and alternatives that are 
more effective, less costly, and morally right. It's time that we take the suffering out of science. Thank you.